my name is Angela Bradis, and I'm a fifth grade science teacher here in Maryland. I teach in Prince George's County Public Schools District, and I'm so glad to be here with you today. If you find this content, um, any of these videos informative, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and also please make sure you like the video and comment on them so we can spread the news and information to other teachers uh, who may find it beneficial as well. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a virtual data wall and how to use it to engage your students during this time of distance learning. So let's get into the video. How do you create a virtual data wall? Well, first of all, let me start off by saying how um, I've used this data wall that you guys see right now in my own classroom, and it has been successful. It has been extremely successful. And I was motivated to start using it, um, especially in first quarter when I saw a majority of my students were unmotivated and they were failing. A lot of my students were failing. They were not turning in assignments. And I've used a data wall consistently in the past, but for due to distance learning and all the information being thrown my way, I just hadn't had time to get to the data wall. And it, it impacted me in my instruction. And I noticed it, um, especially in the very beginning of first quarter. So I implemented this um, in the middle of first quarter around progress reports time. And I saw a vast difference and improvement. As of right now, I have students, I would say about 90% of my students are engaged. I know it's not 100, but I'll take 90% over 40%. 90% um, of my students, they are engaged and they are um, working to their full potential. And it's all thanks to this data wall. So I'm gonna explain how it works, how I've used it. And to start off with, um, it's a Google slide template. And this slide is actually, this slide template is made available to you. If you click on the link in underneath this video, uh, you will be able to access this resource for free. The first thing you're going to need to do um, is you're gonna actually need to go into Google Classroom and create a virtual data wall section. So I have a virtual data wall section and this is how my students ac access a virtual data wall. Some people actually have class websites if you wanna use your cl class website. Um, that is your choice, that's your prerogative. But as for me, I use Google Classroom. So you need, you're gonna need to do two things. One, if you create a virtual data wall section, you're gonna have to create an assignment called, um, and you could call it whatever you wanna call it. I called mine's data wall assigned student number. And the purpose of this assignment is so that you can assign each student their private number for the data wall. Each student needs their own assigned private number so they can access their data. And you'll see why shortly. And so when you create the assignment, you're just gonna send a private comment to the students. And essentially, if you read the directions for my assignment, I, I, in a nutshell, I told the students they need to read um, the directions. Um, they need to read the private comment so that, so that they can see their assigned numbers, assigned number, and once they see their assigned number, they've read it, they need to mark this assignment as done. And you may notice that some students didn't mark it as done, but as of right now, all the students know their assigned number. So I'm not really concerned about that. And one thing I definitely told the students is that if they choose to share their number with another student, that is their decision and their responsibility. I assigned the numbers in a private fashion so that the students can remain anonymous because some students may start feeling ashamed because they didn't do as well with their data. And in order to remove that, um, I just made sure all students remained anonymous. And then the next thing I have is, and one more time, this is assigned as an assignment. So this has to be assigned as an assignment so that you can send a private comment to each student. If you don't wanna do it through Google Classroom, you can feel free to email your students, but um, going through Google Classroom, I found was much easier. The next thing is that your actual slides in and of itself, that's going to be posted in Google Classroom as a material. So if you post it as a material, the students can come here and access it whenever they want to. So there are five things that you need in order to do this data wall. One, you need this template. So you actually need the Google slide in and of itself. And within the Google slides, I've embedded four Google documents 
that you can utilize for yourself. So there's a document number one is a student copy of data. Document number two is teacher copy of data. Document number three, student copies of grades. Document number four is teacher copy of grades. Um, my data wall does include progress report grades and report card grades. Now, you might be thinking, that's way too much, Angela. I don't have time for all of that. That's fair. That's fine. That's up to you. Um, I included the progress report grades so that students can set goals for what grades they wanted on the report card. And that actually proved to be very effective, um, very, very effective. And so that's another reason why I included that section on this virtual data wall template. But let's look at each component really quickly. So the student copy of as a student copy of grade, you have the student copy of their data. One thing you're gonna notice is that there's a section for the achievement bands. So let's say you're a math teacher. When you're filling out this section, you need to know what the achievement bands are for assessments in your school district for your content area, which would be math. So you need to know what the achievement bands are for math. For science, the achievement bands are, as you see right here. So for science in my school district, between 0 and 49% is below, 50 to 69% is proficient, and 70% and above is mastery. And it's really important that the achievement bands are laid out so that the students know where they fall when they see their data. You're also going to have a section where you need to put the assessment name. And if you choose to, um, you can include the date the assessment was provided or given or administered. And I, I do that. So that's why I also included that section. As you notice, there are no names listed. It's only the student numbers. And that's why it's important for the students to know what their numbers are so that they can use their number to figure out how they did. So I'm going to delete this really quickly. When you are providing the students with their data, one thing I would say is start with the teacher copy, a Google document. This is where you want to be working in. So this is where you want to first record all your data. And the reason why you want to do work in this document first is because you have the students' names. You're not trying to, it, this makes like so much more simple. I tried one time looking at data and putting it in the student copy and I was getting confused by the numbers. And so I start off by working in the teacher copy Google document. And because their names are already recorded and listed, I could just easily enter in and input their data here. And then when I'm done inputting all their data, all I simply do is copy what I have here. And I just simply paste it in the student copy Google document, just like this. And that is the easiest way to record their data in their student copy Google document. So that's what I do. And um, of course, like I mentioned before, there is also, you know, a section for grades. So I do record their progress report grades and their uh, report card grades so that they can set goals for the upcoming uh, quarters for progress reports and report cards. And that has worked really, really well. When we come here, I do have an inspirational message for the students and you can see it yourself. So I tell the students, this is your way of seeing your progress, setting your goals for yourself and crushing your goals. I look forward to celebrating each of you as you grow and show progress. And the important thing is this, I definitely, definitely set aside time within my instructional block to go over their data. So I may set aside 15 to 20 minutes. It usually doesn't take me longer than 20 minutes. I would say, honestly, uh, when I'm going over their data, it takes anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. And I make sure that the students know the number of students who scored below, the number of students who scored proficient, and the number of students who scored mastery in their class. And I actually would show them a graph um, of all of that as well so that they could have a visual representation of that. And in addition to that, what I do is I go ahead and I have a slide where I write down the students' names. So I have um, the students who scored proficient and the students who scored mastery. I write their names down on this slide that you currently see in front of you so that they can see it, so that they can be recognized, celebrated, 
and they love it. They definitely love it. It definitely has boosted their motivation. And those students who don't see their name up on the data wall, they're motivated to see their name up there. Um, they want to be celebrated and recognized as well. And right now, you guys should see student number 05, student number 18. But on my, real, on my actual data wall, you'll see the students' names. Because this is being posted on the internet, that's the only reason why you don't see names on here. And there, for the students who don't get proficient in mastery, I also encourage them as well. So there may be students who might have scored a 47%. To get proficient, you need a, between a 50% and a 69%. And I will let the students know, I'll let the class know, there's some of you guys who are so close. You are so, so close. You are three percentage points shy or you are five percentage points short. And if you continue to focus and do your best, I know you can get proficient or mastery. And I give them that motivational speech that motivates them. And there are some students who ri they've risen to the occasion. Um, so I definitely encourage you to um, encourage those students who may not get recognized on the wall to let them know that it is still possible for them to it is still possible for them to get recognized as well. And um, similarly, I have a similar section for progress report and report card grades. And at the end of the at the end of the slide template, you will see a note. And I did have a note for my students. And essentially, what I told them was. First quarter is not over yet, like you can see. And I told them how I believe in each of them because I truly do. And I'm just going to read what I said. I said, I believe that if you complete your assignments on time and turn in your missing assignments, you can earn the grade you want. I believe that you each have potential and can achieve whatever you set your mind on accomplishing. So that is the message um, I provide them with. And... In addition to being recognized on the data wall, I also present my students with a certificate and it looks something like this. So if you Google student achievement certificate, you'll see a lot of different templates that pop up. I was able to create the certificate using Canva because I have a paid version of Canva. I just used my, my paid version to create this, but there are free templates on Canva that you can create certificates with. So just letting you know that you don't have to pay for Canva to create certificates. You can use the free version to create certificates as well. In addition to the certificate, I also present my students with a um, BJ's Awesome Achievement Certificate. And so I did not spend any money for this. So BJ's Brew House Restaurant is amazing where they provide educators with free um, certificates. You can get up to 140 certificates for the whole year, and you can use that to reward your students. And I love it. Um, there are other programs that are available like BJ's, um, but I've been using BJ's. The only caveat is that it's only, you can only use BJ's for grades K through five. So um, for those of you guys who might be in middle school or high school, there are other reward programs you can look into that will provide you with free uh, certificates, okay? So that's why it takes like between 10 to 15 minutes because I'm taking the time to go over their data. I celebrate those students who are proficient in mastery, award them with their certificates, and then also present them with their BJ's certificate. And I will email, I do email the students their certificates and the, the BJ's coupon certificate that they receive as well. And the last thing that I want to uh, note or draw your attention to is that I teach three class sections. That is why you see section number, section number, section number. I just remove the number. You just need to uh, you just need to record what your numbers are. And then I actually have three different data walls. So I have three Google Classrooms for each of my classes, and they each have their own data wall. I have three copies of these slides, and they are uploaded into each individual Google Classroom. And I do link, so if you notice um, right here where it says section number, I do link the student copy of the data so that the students constantly, continuously have access to their data, and they do refer back to it. I had a student say, hey, Mrs. Broadus, my dad doesn't believe I scored mastery on my assessment, and I told him, go back to the data wall and show your dad the data on the data wall, and he did that, and you know, his dad celebrated him, and he was excited and exuberant from it. So 
the data wall can be really, really effective if you use it well. Literally, I've seen my students' motivation increase there. It was rough at the beginning of first quarter where I had a large number of students who were not completing and turning in their assignments. Utilizing the data wall helped a lot. And my students are now completing, um, I would say 90% of my students, 90 to 95% of my students are now completing their assignments. And a lot of it is due to implementing the data wall, celebrating the wins, celebrating the students who are making progress, even if they don't achieve mastery or proficient, and just constantly letting them know that they can, they each have potential, and that if they put in the work, they can see the results from that. So we use the data wall to motivate the students. Um, I also have a conversation with the students and it starts off as a general group conversation. And if they want more one-on-one -on -one conversations, we have them where as a class, I let them know, so you guys have a decision now. What goal are you gonna set for yourself? Are you gonna try to get mastery? Are you gonna try to get proficient? If so, what per, what number, what range are you looking at? So ha having giving the students an opportunity to actually think of their own goals and think of where they want to get to has been has proved to be very helpful. So I hope you find this information helpful and useful. If you implement the data wall, please let me know how it goes in the comment section. Um, let me know what comments you have for this video. Also, if you, you know, if you watch this video and you found it helpful and useful, please like the video, please drop a comment. And the goal, honestly, is to help other teachers. I think this is a beneficial resource and I definitely would love to get this in, into the hands of other teachers. So please go ahead, like the video, drop a comment, let me know if you have any questions, anything that you would suggest that you would do differently or anything that you are currently implementing in your own virtual classroom in regards to data wall, let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. And as a reminder, you can find this template linked beneath the video. So I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.